Hey guys, welcome back. So I've been a little quiet on here lately. I apologize for that, but that's because there is something exciting happening in the back shop. See that back there? Anyways, so big announcement this Thursday, but until then, we needed to touch base on something that has not got attention as far as video goes, but there has been a lot of work done on it. Dad's been busy on the cab over. So nothing necessarily exterior, nothing under the cab, but the inside, has come a long ways. So lots of updates, lots of some really uh, neat stuff inside. So let's check that out. Okay, so interior wise, there is a lot happening here that I don't think there has been an update on. Seats added, console created, dash is multiple screens put in, shifter engineered and installed, <laughs> and everything else. Everything else has been done. There's lots going on. Let's start. Where do you want to start here? Well, if you want to start the shifter, that was, I didn't want to, because this thing's tiny inside, you know, traditionally you'd have a shifter here or a shifter here. The problem with one here is obviously we wouldn't have cup holders and room for stuff that we want in the middle. So I didn't want to call them shift. It's kind of not friendly to do with the tilt cab. That was going to be an issue. So I've got kind of something going on and I'll have to get a cylinder back here to show you, but this is actually going to be a hydraulic shifter. And this was laying around here. It's out of Alex's car. So it's 68 Camaro shifter. It happens to be an aftermarket. So it's gated for a four speed 700 or a four L 80. So it happened to be right. And I thought, why not put that in a dash? So a little bit of work made a ring welded to the dash. I cut the handle off the shifter. It would normally turn down. So I cut the handle off, reversed it, made some brackets, made the slot. So now drive will be down here. You know, one, two, three, drive, neutral, reverse, and park. So it worked out really cool. But instead of a cable, because a shifter cable is very stiff, you can bend a radius of a couple feet, but you can't bend sharp, which is what it's going to take to tilt this cab. You're going to have to bend pretty sharp. I'm putting a hydraulic cylinder on here. I'm going to match that cylinder on a transmission. I'll bleed it up here, but when I move this lever, it'll actuate this cylinder, which will send hydraulic fluid down to the same cylinder on the transmission and it'll actuate it. So it'll be a hydraulic shifter rather than a cable. Okay, so the cylinder. Actually, funny story, found those for like $30, $50 each. They're cheap. <laughs> yeah, you get, they're not, it's not a cheap cylinder by any means, but it's surplus, so happened to be right. I mean, I could have used a much smaller cylinder, but this one was 37 bucks. I'm not gonna split it. <laughs> But it is brass and it is hydraulic, but this will be mounted inside the dash way up in here and the lever on this shifter that you can see hanging down. This lever will push that cylinder and the cylinder will be extended and when you pull down into gears, it'll shove it. So this becomes like a master cylinder and it'll push fluid to another one of these. It'll be on a transmission. It'll push the, you know, your selector on the transmission so as you pull up on the shifter it'll pull fluid out of it and it'll just reverse the process but it'll be a hydraulic shifter i can take a a small an3 like a dash three hose you can bend it this tight where a shifter cable is like this you know it's a stiff right. piece right look at this fancy steering wheel and braking gas pedal too this is from our friends at billet specialties they always have really nice pieces these weren't just a simple install either. <laughs> well, there's nothing simple. <laughs> so it's going to be drive by wire. It won't have a cable for the throttle. Same as the shifter. It'll be, this will be a wire, you know, so I'll have cruise control in here, which is one of the beauties of drive by wire. But the others, we don't have to have a cable that's bending every time we tilt the cab. Mm -hmm. It'll literally just be wires. So we're using a, a GM pedal assembly but of course i cut it off right here and made from here down and this is a camaro pedal i mean you can't see it back here but it uses the stock spring this is for like a 68 camaro and so now the the sensors up here i'll cover that with upholstery this is also a, a gm brake pad like a 68 camaro and i just made this whole pedal assembly welded a back plate on it that fits in here and this bolts to it but Nothing about the brakes is conventional or factory made. This, the pedal is 
custom made. This mount up in here is all custom made. It actuates a hydro boost, which is between here and the firewall, which is the power assist deal. It's hydraulic power assist. So the hoses will come out of here and go down to the power steering pump. But out on under the hood is just a, it, right now it's a, a Willwood master cylinder, an aluminum master cylinder. So you look, you think it doesn't have power brakes. It actually has power brakes. It's just that that's hidden inside the cab. Okay, so if I was doing a good job, I would have a video of this. I'll try to find some pictures because I don't have a video. But anyways, this is all 100% custom handmade fabricated console going on here. Talk about the design and what you did here. It's kind of, I didn't even want to do a console on this truck originally. I wanted to keep the floor open, but I realized that I'm going to have to create a tunnel in the floor because I need to come from the throttle body, which is about right here underneath the cab. There was no place to put an air cleaner or a fresh air tube. So I decided to go ahead and put a console or a bump in the floor, a, a tunnel, and there'll be a four inch air tube that'll go forward and it'll have probably twin air filters out under the hood. But that kind of convinced me to go ahead and put a console in it, which really worked out for the best. When you're driving, if you don't have a place to lay your knee and your foot, it becomes uncomfortable after a while. I know this from Drag Week and Innova. I literally get a pain in my knee driving long distances without anything to, to lean against. So I decided to make the console. It's floating off of the tunnel right now but that's because that space will be taken up with lots of padding carpet padding and carpet mm -hmm. and it's attached to the dash up here so everything's built to fit there's two quarter inch bolts that are holding this in and there'll be bolts in the floor as well but i didn't want to just take it forward and kill all the space and make it look ugly so i just put the swoop in here and filled it for whatever that is 10 inches so if you just look in, you think that that's a solid box, but back here, you'll be able to get to the air conditioner hoses for the two vents and then all the holly wiring. This is just sitting in here, but you can see that'll have a big plug on the back of it. So all that'll be, you know, it'll go through the hole up there and back up into the dash. It'll be out of sight. And of course, two cup holders for the big gulps. Those are made for big cups. <laughs> They're made for big gulps. We're separated for the big 32 ounce or whatever it is. And then here, this is a pretty neat placement. Try to decide where the best place for power windows would be. That's easy. Well, you're laying your arms laying right here. So when you're sitting it, you literally can just touch either window like this. This is eighth inch aluminum plate, so it's bulletproof, but it'll be wrapped in leather. So it'll look really nice. And then here, there's enough room in there for a couple six packs if you want. That's an ice chest. <laughs> this truck has so much room because it's so thought out. It's so small, but it actually fits so well. Like it's a very, very comfortable truck. And then this is actually what was in it that's the, originally. Yeah, so that's the original 53 stuff. And I just spent the whole weekend working on that because with this, when this isn't here, there's supposed to be a speaker from the factory and it, this grooving continues across and it's open right here between the grooves for the speaker. Well, I put the big Kenwood stereo in here. So I ended up, I didn't even know what I was gonna do. I put this in out of mandatory, as it was a necessity. This was where the radio used to go. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that hole yet. It'll probably have a billet panel with switches in it. Most of the switches will actually be in the holly dash. I don't want a bunch of toggle switches, so I may end up just making a blank. But I dug this stuff out. It was really rusty and beat up. In fact, you can see rust holes in here. I gotta repair these. But this is a trim piece. This is a trim piece that says truck. It used to say General Motors truck across here. <laughs> so I ended up cutting it and welding studs on the back of it to bolt this section in. And I've got some work to do yet. It'll be molded in. I'm thinking about just molding this into the dash. But I wanted the ashtray just for nostalgia. And it works really good. It's so smooth. This it's does. This does too. I said when you walked away, it's got some pop to it. Those are... It'll have, hopefully be able to have the stock glove compartment because there's a lot of room under there, but I've got to put an air conditioner under with it. So the glove compartment may have to get cut down, but it will still be there and it will still work. 
this will be a cigarette lighter, and then I'm going to drill holes here and probably somewhere in the console for USB ports. And I'm even going to put a, I think I've got a 750 watt AC inverter that we're going to put in it. So there'll be a plug, a, a, just a 110 plug somewhere. I've already got, they, they don't look real good, so they may not go here. They may go up under the dash, but you'll be able to plug whatever you want. And, a, you know, within reason, lights. A truck with true necessities built into it. It's like a new truck. It also has, will have, it's over there, something Alex got me for Christmas, remote start. That's true. I was like, well, it can't have all this stuff and not have remote start. Come on. And roll the windows up and down, lock the doors, set the alarm, and be able to start it all with the same remote. Perfect. And then I'll have a separate remote that I'll use to tilt the cap. So, I'd say that's some seriously good pro progress. Wait, what? Seat belts. Oh, seat belts. The cool thing is... Oh, I didn't even notice even, this. Yeah, you didn't even know it. I did not know this. This so, is news to me. These are, you know, just like everything else with the truck, it's about comfort. Typically, the seat belt, these aftermarkets would mount over here. I sat in it and messed with it long enough that they would try to fall off of my shoulder, so I didn't like that. My truck that I drive every day, the seat belt actually comes out of the seat, so I sat in my truck and worked admit, everything has been done off of my one-ton truck. I worked the dimensions out, so when you pull on this and it attaches over here, it's, it's over your shoulder but not on your neck. That's important. That's good. I did. So, and then, Update for me, too. In order to make those things work, I had to take the retractors apart, turn the seat belt around inside, which is really hard to do because there's a lot of mechanism in there. It clearly says on there, do not remove this cover, but I don't follow instructions. Do not do this at home. I did it. <laughs> it worked perfect, and it was time consuming. The springs go, but I got it back together. Everything worked, and then once I got this all together, I realized that because of the short distance, when it would retract, and the seat belt retractor was full of wadded up seat belt, this was really floppy. It was like it's something like this. Oh, yeah. And I didn't want that beaten on the paint. So I ended up shortening the seat belts a foot, which, oh, wow. don't panic, I'm a professional. <laughs> I have the right thread. I have a very expensive sewing machine. I was able to shorten them. Well, having done that, if I had done that to start with, I wouldn't have had to take them apart because it was all about turning this upper mount uh -huh. backwards. And I could have saved myself a big step. But anyway, it works and they're very comfortable and they retract without, some of them do that all the time, but these are very proper. Perfect. Okay, I'd say that's a pretty good update. It's like a rough truck on the outside. It's gonna be fancy on the inside. So picking interior color for the part that'll be painted, leather samples, carpet samples. I like that. I think that. Or you could have the 70s couch. <laughs> or this bright yellow one. Yeah. Yeah. Pink. Blue. I don't know. One of these. Kind of like these. <laughs> Dark red. Which color? Pink color. I'm thinking that. So part of the problem is I don't want it to be metallic. But that one does look pretty good. So let's look at this. Compared to, oh, that clash is like. I do not like that. Terrible. Problem is, I want a dark color like that. I mean, if you want to match it, you don't necessarily want to match it. I want it to clash to some degree. That's going to be a terrible. process. I'll good. update you when we figure out which color actually looks good. A little bit. So, this was the color original, or the leather and color originally. Um, and then we found these. It's shinier, different, but it's got a lot of texture wear look to it. So, currently thinking this, but the only problem is this line does not look like they have it anymore. So, she, mom's got to call and see if they've got it. So, do this on the sides of the seats. This molasses, it's a dark brown. Down the center and on the console. Paired with this for the part of the red interior, or for part, the part of the interior that'll be painted with this carpet. So, they all look really good together. It's hard to get everything in one picture here, but I like that. Do you like that? Are you happy with that? Do I like what? Do you like that set of stuff? I do, I think. 
I like this because look, you're gonna get in and out of it. It's gonna scratch and it looks kind of worn. Mm -hmm. And then I think you could take leather treatment or conditioner and pretty much eliminate it. Yeah, it just that looks, looks good. Aged. It's kind of like baseball-ish. Yeah, it looks like but a glove. Not. I like that color too. You too, and I'm probably not gonna be able to get it. <laughs> story of my life <laughs> but i like the carpet too it's very different cocoa chocolate yeah paired with every one of these colors is on that truck yeah. i mean it's, we're kind of matching the interior to the outside i don't know if we intended to but that's kind of what's happening oh, i like it though and i like that brown mixed with it those two look good beside each other earth tones dirt rust. i like it <laughs> has to be ready for race week too so balancing that and balancing what you guys are gonna see on thursday i'm so hesitant to put it out yet but the reality is is we have a lot of work to do in a little bit of time so the content should keep flowing so check back thursday because there's going to be a really neat announcement and if you follow me on instagram you've already seen some hints of it but now you can hear the full story of what's going on so thank you so much for watching and as always be happy go fast and stay pretty i will see you guys next time